Or am I staying? National Forest? Actually, we are staying at the Cherokee National Forest in Tennessee. What makes this cool is, it's actually a campground. This is a KOA campground. In today's video, I give you a tour of this campground, show you some sites I would recommend, including the river site, which is surprisingly affordable. I show you that. And, and that's not all. Today, I changed campsites in the same KOA campground. I show you why and the new camp setup. We test the Wi-Fi speed on the guest Wi-Fi, the premium paid Wi-Fi, and Verizon. You're gonna wanna see that. You get to tour a 1949 camper. Vintage, restored, so cool. Mainline is the brand, not Airstream. And you get to explore some local history, including Kenny Chesney has been here. And you get to see the Noli Chucky River here in the Cherokee National Forest. Giant video, let's go. So this is site 29. It's right here where my finger is. Site number. Let me show you some reasons I really like this site and would recommend this site for you. The first thing I like about it is you come down this road and you go this way and then you back in and you're right in your site, which is really, really nice. Easy access. Uh, reason number one. Reason number two, you got full hookups. Water, electric 30 amp only, cable TV. What is cable TV? And this is our sewer hookup. Another reason why I like the site is because it's got really coarse gravel, crushed rock really, followed by this nice mulch, a really cool fire ring. Who doesn't like fire rings? And your own picnic table, which is really awesome. So your rig's right there. The trees are not filled in yet, but this site would have some shade once the trees are filled in um, with our summer foliage. Uh, currently it's spring, so they're still budding out. The last thing that really makes this site special is... Oh yeah, it's got a water view. Is this cool? These are class two and four rapids here. Um, your neighbor over here is quite a ways away and you have all of this river view as part of your campsite. And it's just the most lovely thing. And it's really pretty inexpensive. We'll go through the prices at the end. And even with my rig parked like this, my new neighbor who just moved in, I really can't see him. Um, when I'm sitting here looking at the river or I'm working from inside the rig, the way the cab view is, I'm looking down the gravel path here, not at his rear end, which is pretty cool. So Site 29, highly recommend, especially if you're looking for a special treat. Makes you feel like you're in the Cherokee National Forest. Pretty cool. The next site I would recommend is Site 22, right here. And there's a couple reasons for it. Number one, it's kind of designed for a van, according to the staff. And the deal is, and what I would do, is I would pull my van forward all the way up to here, to the grass so that my front cab view, kind of at an angle, right? Like this a little bit, is looking at this. That would be super special. Maybe you pull it in this way, so this is your view, and then your patio view is over here with your fire ring. This site does not have sewer, but it does have, but it does have 30 amp and 110. On the map, it actually says it's a tent site, so kind of interesting. Um, no uh, sewer connection that I can find here um, but you'd have to go do your tank duties at an empty site before you roll out of here. Next site is ditch the van, stay in a caboose train thing. Look at this. That's actually a split wall duplex, is that what they call them? Um, new construction, mimicked to look like a train. Pretty cool. Got two separate patios, one here, one here. Got kind of a view, a great patio view of the river and over the rigs. That's pretty special. But where we're headed is right up here. Let me show you this. Welcome to site 12B. This is my home. I'm moving from the river view to this view. Let me tell you why I chose this site and why I would recommend it for you. So here's site 12B next to the horseshoes here on the map. See that right here? And here's the site. And this is why I like this site. I'm gonna actually pull in forward. So my patio door is gonna face this area this is the fairy tale wagon. We're gonna get a tour of that. Utilities are over here, so what I would do is actually run my uh, electric cable from here under the van and plug in, you'll see that. But what I like about this is, this is the view. That cool caboose, a little bit of the river. There's my table. But if I back in, 
I'm looking at that. Not overly inspirational. I think I can get away with pulling in forward. What you're looking at here is the shower house and the laundry. We'll show you that separately. But this is why I like this uh, vantage point is that forward. I get a nice little bit of a territorial view. It is a few dollars less expensive. And you see the thing on top of the caboose thing? Let me zoom in for you. What do you think that is? Yes, and here's another component right here. Yes, what do you think that is? That is the Wi-Fi antennas. And even the free guest actually works up here. It's kind of drippy, but it's a couple megabits down, one megabit barely up. And uh, that's why I like this site is I'm able to have all my devices connect to the guest network for free. And um, it's doable up here. It's not doable down there. So another reason why I like this site, I would recommend this for sure. Rock climbing here, net, Wi-Fi antenna, kids playground, a little area we can uh, rock in the rockers and enjoy the view from the picnic table. Pretty cool, right? So after three nights on the river, we're gonna slum it and we're going up the hill right behind that red caboose looking thing. made into the campsite came from the river <laughs> now we're on the hill which is cool I like this site a lot and uh, before I rolled into the KOA I'd been um, street camping boondocking harvest hosting as you would call it um, for a couple days prior so I'm about five days on my tank it definitely needs to be uh, emptied Let me show you at my campsite here and how I set it up with a forward facing motion, which requires my electrical to go under the van. Let me show you. So here's how I do my setup on my table cloth. This is my portable water. We'll fill that before we leave. Grill, obviously, here's my fancy chair. And then what I do here is this is the, the cable. I kind of tie it into a little knot so there's more weight on this end. And then I throw it under the van from the other side like that. So I would tie the knot here, throw it under the van, and it's just enough uh, momentum to get it to the other side for me to plug, uh, plug into the side of the van. And then this is where I would actually run the um, you know, plug into the shore power. So you might be asking, what happens if I need to move? I disconnect from the van, pull the cord to the shore power post, and drive away. Then come back and repeat the process. Pretty simple. This is one reason why I don't do all the water hookups and stuff. Um, I'll turn the van around for that before I leave here uh, tomorrow. And um, that's just one reason why I don't connect anything except the, um, the, the power itself. And really, just look at this lovely view. So awesome. Thought you might like to see what the view from inside the van to the outside looks like. And you can see why this is really pretty awesome right private inspiring right so you see why i oriented the rig why i do otherwise my front window would be looking at this not awesome let me show you the uh the shower house so the deal with the shower house is there's usually a code so there's a men's bathroom code and a women's bathroom code. So 0651, let me show you the shower house. So the men's restroom's on the this side, the women is on that side, and the laundry room's in the middle. We'll show you that. So we enter the code. 
that gives us access. And these folks have done a nice job. Sinks. Urinals, always fun to see, right? Uh, these are the toilet stalls, pretty basic. Uh, this is a shower stall, these are pretty nice. So the shelf for sitting or putting your bag on, and then in the shower, uh, it's really uh, spacious. The water pressure is awesome. The hot water is near instant. Thank you <laughs> for that. And what I think is really special is they do this. I've never seen that before. So having a bath mat to put on the floor to step out onto, that's pretty cool. This is the laundry room, 8-8. Eight eight. That's cool. So what we have here is washer and washer, dryer, dryer. Not sure why these are all open, kind of funny. Um, and reasonably priced, two bucks each. I did a load of laundry here and it uh, was very efficient and took no time at all. And I love this sign. All clothes must be washed clean before drying. That's some good advice. One signature thing about KOAs is they usually have kind of odd and interesting places to camp if you don't have an RV. If you haven't seen my video on the one in Branton, um, Florida, um, yeah, Branton, Florida, where they ha had stage coaches as a, a place to camp, check out what these guys have done. Yes, it's a ferry wagon. This is cool. Like it's got a split door, so you can actually leave the top open. Great news, we've got a little access to the ferry wagon here. Are you ready for this? Look at how cute this is. Is this adorable? Got a sink, coffee, fridge, st clothing storage, and look at that bed. And the ceiling. Is that awesome? <laughs> it's so great. And you can again have your door split so you get a degree of privacy right and they're working on the artwork here by their daughter so cute what a great idea it's amazing how much stuff you can cram into a tiny space right so i want to do is show you three versions of uh, connectivity here we'll go to my um, wi-fi panel so we're going to start with the guest wi-fi this is the free wi-fi provided by the koa campground and i'm going to use the speed test to uh, measure the speed, sorry for the reflection. So this is coming off the free guest Wi-Fi. This really didn't work down where I was at the river, but my new site, you can see that it's pretty anemic, right? That's 0.24 megabits down. And this is the upload speed, which is, yeah, not even working. <laughs> pretty useless, right? So what we're gonna do is go back to the Wi-Fi and I want to show you the premium, which I paid for. Let's test the speed there. I think we'll find a different result here. Oh yes. Any of that is pretty awesome. So this is 23 uh, megabits down load from the cloud, the internet, if you will. And then the upload speed for comparison let's go to my verizon jetpack and this is my verizon jetpack and so let's do the same scenario here so this is coming on a verizon i've got about three bars and i kind of put it in the window because i do seem to get better results so it's about eight megabits down sorry for all the shadows and reflections and it's you know one point ish on the way up so pretty anemic from Verizon. And for the paid premium, it's pretty good. It's, um, I think one day was $10, three days is 20 bucks, and 30 days is $50. So if I was staying um, for any more than a couple of days, I would be spending the 50 bucks to get uh, unlimited premium data uh, for the duration of your visit. Um, and this is what I like to see with campgrounds. Have a degree of free Wi-Fi um, that hopefully works, but um, offer a premium. And you got to support the cause, ladies and gentlemen. I know you will be irritated, 
But let me tell you, when you're trying to get cellular connectivity, when you're trying to get the guest Wi-Fi and you gotta get stuff done, having that high speed premium experience is so, so important. So you may very much disagree with me here that they should put this out, but it's a big investment to put this hardware in and the software stuff in, the antennas up, maintain it, ISPs. This is kind of a rural area. So I get why they um, charge a, a premium for it. And I'm happy to pay because I need connectivity. This is not a send mom a Facebook picture. This is business for me. And if you are like me at all, where you need connectivity, uh, first uh, check the check the speeds, which I did before I bought, and then um, buy it and thank them for offering it. That would be my recommendation. All right, let me show you the building and some of the history. It's pretty amazing. Wait till you see the gift shop. Hey, if you're getting anything out of this video, sure, I appreciate a thumb up. If you learned anything, may, mildly entertaining maybe, a uh, thumb up, really would appreciate that. Helps me know you liked it. And YouTube shares it, more, shares it out more readily, which would be awesome. Comment below, uh, have you stayed at a KOA? Would you stay at a KOA like this? Were you familiar with KOA and being accommodating for vans? And subscribe to the channel. If you're into cool places to camp, history, cooking, <laughs> all kinds of things, RV, van life, lifestyle, uh, subscribe to the channel, a whole lot more coming up. So this is the big camp house. And uh, this building has some pretty interesting history. Let me zoom into the fretwork up here. It's just barely visible, right? Uh, that indicates a pretty old building in Victorian areas typically. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in and show you a little bit of uh, history. Uh, it's pretty fascinating. And Kenny Chesney is part of the story. And wait until you see this gift shop. Let's go. And this looks like the outside of the building, right? Like the original building. And this is all new construction. And you would be right. So let me give you a little pan of the store here. I love it when they have local products available. And this is cool. Uh, these guys have a really well-stocked RV necessities. Most KOAs do a really good job on this one. These guys do really great. Everything from sewer hoses to, you know, plugs, bulbs. This is nice too, if you kind of run out of something. The closest grocery store is pretty far away. So you, I just love this kind of stuff. Here's the uh, camper lounge. So you can come in here and chill if you're waiting for your laundry across the driveway, watch TV. And then what we want to do in here is show you, um, again, local products. Just love this. I mean, who doesn't like pickle erasers? And jewelry. Look at these. Corn relish, yum. And because this is a bit of a history building, um, we're going to ask one of the staff to come up and help us here because the site you saw outside is the same site right here. So let's see if we can get some background on this. And there's one really cool contemporary piece of history that we'll want to know about. And so Mike's been good enough to, to give us some, some history lessons. So the building is kind of old, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit of the history of the building, please. The area actually goes back to the, before Revolutionary War when there was a mine three miles down the road. And this house was built in 1889 by a mining company out of... Uh, England and they bought 4,500 acres to take out the trees, to mine, to actually turn this into a town of 30,000 inhabitants that was going to have textile mills and, and they actually put in a rail line, which is what is also with our caboose that's on the mm. original rail bed. Oh, that's cool. This is the miner and the purser's house. Uh, Several different mining companies right? up that's until so cool. 1946 and then this became a seed and feed store granary. And actually in this room, you can see where the holes, you see the little round holes oh, yeah. in the bottom, there were yeah. milling machines in here. Oh yeah. yeah. Shelling machines. Look at this one, mm -hmm. trying to get in the end. Oh, yep, there's <laughs> spooky animals. So that was actually up until the late seventies and then it became a Mexican restaurant. And also in the corner across the way, Kenny Chesney went to ETSU, which is right up the road. And he played here. In this corner, there was a stage. This used to be called the Chucky Trading Post. Uh huh. Okay. And the lore says that the owner here told Kenny, if you're going to make anything of yourself, if you're going to be any success in this industry, you need to get out of this town and go to Nashville. Start writing songs. And Kenny actually admits to him saying that to him. I think the, um, the other part of the story was he was paid to stop singing because somebody wanted to make a proposal. One gentleman came in, and this is a one sided story because we haven't been able to check with Kenny, but. 
a gentleman came in with his lady friend and they were on a date and he said that he went up to Kenny and said, I'll give you 10 bucks if you quit playing so that I can talk to my date. And he did. Well, Mike, just thank you so much for oh, no um, just a great campground. It's been a delightful experience. You guys have been awesome. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I love it when I get corrected. This is not an Airstream. You wanna see inside? Rachel, the proprietor here with Mike, her husband, uh, opened the door for us so we can take a look. This is a 1949 mainstream, a uh, mainline, sorry, mainline. Look at this. Mike restored it all by himself. Is this exceptional? Birch wood, full size bed. Right down to the, uh, what do you call that? A special kind of plastic from the 40s and 50s. Here's some uh, data on 1949. Average cost of new house, $7,000. Average wage per year, about three grand. Gasoline was 17 cents, which kind of expensive. Uh, new car was 1,000, 1,400. Uh, coffee, 43 cents a pound. Uh, bacon, pretty expensive, 55 cents a pound. And this camper, 1200 bucks so cool and for those of you that are curious 1949 was the same year that Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer came out so you can come here to KOA Joe Jonesboro and uh, check out vintage this is actually being used for storage so no toilet so you'd be using the bathhouse which is okay super cool right if they take the time to find nostalgia appliances to go in here. So awesome. So you can stay in this for 80 to $90 a night, which is pretty awesome. I might park the van and stay in here one night. And the ferry wagon is 70 to $80 a night. So again, if you're looking for a really different experience, these kind of things make camping just really unique. And it's kind of fun to see how things used to be in the old days and how far we've come. I just love sharing great campsites that are treating their guests like VIPs and these folks are over the top. If you're in the area coming to Jonesburg, Johnson City, Tennessee, or Bristol, uh, Tennessee, which is just about an hour away, seeing all the country music uh, birth of there, uh, I would highly recommend the KOA, Jonesboro, Tennessee. Till we see you soon, I wish you to journey on. thing i get paid nothing by koa i get no special treatment i get no special perks i just like sharing things that are cool and that's what we do here we learn together we share you decide what's the best way to rv the way you want to rv 